Hello church, welcome to another glorious service, another glorious week, hallelujah, yes, and the spirit of the Lord is walking mightily, glory to God. We're moving into the month of July, and the month of July is the month of the reapers, that's what the Lord spoke to me, the month of the reapers, reaping, it's time to reap. You can call it the month of reaping, all right? But you know, it's not restricted or limited to one month. When God starts to speak like this, it just means that God is highlighting something or God is activating a season. Glory to God. So I believe we're moving into, in this second half of, of 2024, we're moving into a season of reaping. Glory to God. Which means it's a season of harvest. Yes, because it's the harvest that we're going to reap. Now there's a difference between there's a difference between the harvest and reaping the harvest, all right? And and I'll spend probably spend a, a lot more time in the month of July uh, talking about how to reap, how to reap the harvest. Uh, one of the things we're going to do this month is we're going to go into a time of prayer and fasting, all right? I will give I will send more instructions. Uh, I'll send it um, maybe through uh, the, uh, my social media uh, uh, platforms, I'll, I'll send you some instructions on, as to how we're going to do this time of prayer and fasting. It's actually going to be more like praise and fasting. All right, we're going to be praising God and then confessions. I'll give you some confessions that we will speak throughout this month of uh, July. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. But let me say a few things. Let me wrap up um, some of the things about boldness because boldness will be necessary when it comes to reaping. To reap your harvest, you need to take bold action to reap your harvest. Hallelujah. Yes. And I'm going to just um, say a few things about boldness and then uh, maybe we'll go into uh, this uh, month of reapers, the reapers, all right? Month of reaping. So, so you can start to understand the direction God is taking us into. All right. So boldness, boldness is a walk of faith. All right. Boldness is a walk of faith. All right. This walk of faith expresses great confidence see when you talk about boldness boldness is a result of confidence you are bold because you are confident all right so this this confidence is a confidence in god's love you are confident in god's love for you right and then also confidence in god's integrity Hallelujah. God's love and God's integrity. In other words, you know that God loves you so much. He'll do whatever it takes to make sure he puts you in a good place. Hallelujah. At the same time, you know that God will keep his word. God is a God of integrity. God is a, person a personality of integrity. All right. And he always keeps his word. So you know that when you go with God's word, you are sure that it will come to pass. There shall surely be a performance of God's word to him that believes. As long as you are believing, God, God will perform his word. This is confidence. This is a confidence that we use when we're stepping out to reap the harvest. Hallelujah. This is a confidence. This is why we can afford to be specific with God. I have found something when people are not specific in their faith, right? In their expectations, it's usually because they're not sure. They have doubts about the love of God and they have doubts about the integrity of God. Hallelujah. So, so that, that confidence in God, you know, allows us to be bold. And one of the expressions of boldness is specificity. The fact that you can be specific with God about what you expect shows that you have confidence in him. It is boldness. It is bold. It is bold for you to be specific. All right. I'll give an example. Let's look at, um, let's look at, uh, Mark 11. All right. Mark 11, 23. All right. Mark 11, 23. And then we'll look at verse 24 as well. Mark 11, 23 and 24. All right. It says, for as shortly I say to you, this is Jesus talking now. Don't forget, he just did something. He just spoke to the fig tree, right? And he was bold. And his disciples heard it. 
right? One of the things I'm going to show you is that boldness, there's, there's a boldness that is, 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 is seen or heard, all right? Boldness is heard in your voice. It's important that your voice is bold because your voice can be loud and timid at the same time. Boldness is not, is not the uh, amplification of your voice. It's, it's a quality. It's an intentionality. Hallelujah. It's a solid consolidation when you speak. It's a confidence. There's a confidence that's, that is in your voice that expresses the boldness of the Spirit of God. All right? But, but we'll get to that. It says, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, notice the specificity. You are not hiding. You are not being vague because you fully expect it to happen the way you are saying it. It says, Wh whoever says to this mountain, hallelujah, to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea, watch this, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. Specificity, right? Since he will have whatever he says. Glory to God. Amen. He'll have what he says. In other words, he'll have the specific thing that he said. Don't be vague. Be bold. Glory to God. There's a singleness of mind when it comes to boldness. You know that you know that you know. This is what I need from God. And I'm going to say it just the way I expect it. That's boldness. Look at the next verse. The next verse, verse 24. It says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, whatever things specific you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Hi. And you will have them. Glory be to God. Did you see that? That is boldness. Boldness makes you specific. Boldness is specific. Glory be to Jesus. You know, you know, when, when Joshua was having a, was fighting in a, in a war, you know, against a certain uh, nation, and uh, they were they were actually they were winning the war, but it was getting dark. Oh, it was getting dark, and uh, they needed more light so they could finish their victory. Right? Joshua was bold. He commanded the sun to stand still, and then he spoke to the to, to the moon as well. Hallelujah! You see, he was specific. He was trying to delay time and it was very specific it was not vague you know when jesus was uh, in the boat and the storm arose and his, his, his disciples were afraid jesus was specific bible says he spoke to the wind he had, he says he rebuked the wind and then he spoke peace to the water hallelujah you see he spoke to the sea right and he spoke to the wind he was specific Glory to God. And they heard him. They were amazed because he, they saw him speaking to the wind. And then they saw him speaking to the water, to the sea. And then the, the wind obeyed. And then the, the, the sea was calm. He rebuked the wind and he spoke peace. Peace to the sea. And it was calm. Glory to God. This is boldness. 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 You break out of that place of timidity and uncertainty and you speak it and there's something about boldness when you speak it all right when you release boldness it tends to it arrests heaven heaven is arrested by boldness heaven is arrested by boldness glory to god the angels are arrested by your boldness glory be to jesus obviously demons are arrested in in the other you know when i say angels are arrested i mean in a positive sense in other words they, they, they stop activity and wait for your next instruction all right demons are also arrested but in the sense of being subdued by your boldness your boldness subdues demons and activates angels your boldness provokes the power of god Hallelujah. See, see, boldness, there are many expressions of boldness. You have, you have, and these are very important expressions, especially as we move into the second half, right? Bold speech, very important. Bold speech, bold praise. Hallelujah. Be bold about your praise. Listen, bold giving, bold sowing. Be bold about your sowing. Hallelujah. Don't just give. Give a bold seed. Hallelujah. When you want to give, give well. See, that's why some people are not breaking out in their finances. They're not bold in their giving. I spoke to 
one of the brothers in church, you know, uh, in Abuja right there, was telling me how, uh, you know, he got challenged by a testimony I was sharing, right? And he said he, he, he jacked up his seed, his regular seed. And as soon as he jacked it up, everything just jacked up. Hallelujah. Things just began to flow. He says, he was amazed. I could see his excitement as he was talking to me. Glory to God. He says, he just didn't know that it was going to be like that. So a lot of times we think we're waiting for God, but, but in reality, God is waiting for us. Bold seed. Learn how to be bold in your sowing. Be bold. Glory be to God. All right. Especially in this second half of the year, as we're moving into this harvest. See, the harvest is, 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 is ripe, but it's time to reap it. And I'm going to teach you how to reap it. The actions to take to reap the harvest. And you have to move quickly. Glory be to Jesus. You have to move quickly because Satan, because of demons, right, also see the harvest. And if you don't move quickly, they'll move in and they'll steal and they'll destroy. All right. So, so we have to be quick. We have to be, we have to be, we have to move with the speed of God when it comes to harvest time. All right. When it comes to uh, harvest time, because we have to reap the harvest. All right, so boldness provokes the anointing of God. I'll give an example. If you go to Acts 14, verse 7. Acts 14 and verse 7. Acts 14 and verse 7. Glory to God. It says, and they were preaching the gospel there. That's another thing we have to learn. When you preach the gospel, you preach it with boldness. You see, the power of the gospel is in its proclamation. The way you proclaim the gospel determines the kind of power that is released. If you are, if you are uncertain, right, then you're going to have this uncertain manifestation and people cannot receive it with full confidence because the way you throw it out is the way they're going to catch it. If you're not confident, then people are not sure you're actually, what you're saying is based on truth. You see, so there's a boldness required to preach the gospel. Preach it like it is so, because it is so. It is truth. The gospel is the truth of God. It's a light of Christ. So you can't shine the light of Christ. So that's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What's Paul saying? Paul is saying, when I preach the gospel, I preach it with boldness. I'm not ashamed of it. Because I know I will not be put to shame when I preach the gospel. Glory be to Jesus. So preach it with boldness. You see, that boldness is part of how people are convinced about your message. The boldness of your message, very important. So it says, and they were preaching the gospel there, right? Next verse. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked, never walked. This is a serious case. The man heard Paul speaking. Now watch this. Don't forget, you see, Paul is preaching the gospel. How is he doing it? With boldness. He's speaking with boldness. He's telling people about, about what Jesus has done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The redemptive work of Christ. He's talking about the new creation. He's talking about the power of God that is available for us in this dispensation. It's letting them know sickness does not have to continue. Poverty doesn't have to continue. There's no need anymore for confusion because the light of God is present. He's speaking with boldness and the man, the man hears him and the man, the man's condition, the man's heart condition begins to adjust based on the way, based on the message and the presentation of that message from Paul. The boldness. You see, there are certain messages you cannot present with uncertainty, with timidity. It won't work. The gospel is one of them. If you want the gospel to work for you, you have to be bold about it. All right? He says, he heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Now watch this. Next verse said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. This is still part of the gospel. This is still proclamation. You see, you proclaim the, 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 the truth, but you also proclaim the manifestation of the truth. This is the gospel. When, you, when he commanded the man to stand up, that was part of the gospel. You see, and that's where the power is. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for in it is the power of God. Hallelujah. This is power. He says, stand up, sit on your feet. And the man leaped and the man walked. See, it was boldness that 
push that man into his miracle in the name of Jesus, in this second half of, of 2024, I push you into your miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ, step in, step in in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing cause you to move into another level of reaping in the name of Jesus. Go forth and reap your harvest. Reap it. Take it by force in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I command the wind of miracles to move in your direction. I command the wind of miracles to produce for you as you step out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So it says, stand up, sit on your feet, and he leaped. So boldness provokes the anointing of God. It provokes it. Hallelujah. It provokes it. It activates the angels. Hallelujah. Bible says the angels hack into the voice of his word. That voicing of his word is a bold voice, not a weak voice, not, not a faithless voice, but a, a, a voice filled with faith. Faith filled. Hallelujah. That's boldness. Glory to God. You see, it is boldness that will cause us to approach God based on his word and his love with full assurance that's boldness with full assurance knowing that he will back up what he has said he will back it up knowing that his love will never depart from us nothing will separate us from the love of god so that's boldness um hebrews hebrews 4 and 12 hebrews 4 and 12 hebrews 4 and 12 Hallelujah. Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, uh, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a descender of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Next verse. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him, or to whom we must give account. Next verse. Let's go back to verse 9. Hallelujah. You see, it takes boldness, boldness, boldness. Do you know that to enter the rest of God, right, you need boldness. It's because of a full assurance that you can rest. So that rest is, is, is a rest of faith. And that's why you're bold. That's why somebody can speak a word and go and sleep. It's, it's a rest, and, and it's always associated with boldness, all right? So it says in verse 9, there, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also seized from his works, as God did from his, all right? It says, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Hallelujah. All right, then look at verse 16, verse 16, verse 16. Go to verse 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So you're coming to God with boldness. That means you have a full assurance. You know God has integrity. You know God loves you. Hallelujah. You know, based on that love and based on his integrity, you are sure. You know that you know that you know. And so you stepped out in boldness. And so you approach God in prayer. When you pray to God, you are praying as a boldness. It's not arrogance. It's not arrogance. There's a big difference between boldness and arrogance. There's a, there's a distinction. It's not the same. All right. Boldness actually is associated with humility. For you to be bold means you are humble enough to receive God's word as truth. You believe God's word to the extent of a full assurance. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. All right. So July is the month of the reapers, or you can call it the month of reaping. But I want to focus on reapers because it's the reapers who are going to enjoy this month. It's the reapers who are going to enjoy the rest of this year. Those who are reapers. You see, we're supposed to be sowers and we're supposed to be reapers. We're supposed to know what to do when it's time to sow. We're supposed to sow. And when it's time to reap, we're supposed to know what to do. 
and it's time to reap. Glory to Jesus. All right. It's time to reap. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, let me, um, let me explain some things about this kind of harvest. The harvest we're going to be reaping, uh, th during the second half of this year. It's a threefold harvest. All right. Uh, you have the harvest of finances. All right. And really that's a harvest of, you know, financial and material resources. All right. So you have a harvest of, of resources. You could call it resources. All right. I just like to call it finances because people connect more to that. Right. It's a harvest of finances. Right. And it includes material resources and financial resources. But you're going to reap it. Glory to God. You're going to reap houses and cars and, and, and money and, and all the things that you need for the next phase. Hallelujah. All right. And, and houses and cars is just, does not fully describe what I'm talking about. I'm just giving you an example. All right. So harvest of finances. Number two, harvest of miracles. And that's a harvest of manifestations of the glory of God. All right. And that includes the favor of God. So you have this harvest of miracles. Glory to God. You're going to see amazing things happen. You're going to see amazing things happen as you reap. You are going to reap the miracles. Right? You're going to reap. I'm going to show you what to do to reap the miracles in this season. Hallelujah. Number three, very important, is the harvest of souls. The reason I put it at number three is because a lot has to do with number one and two. As you reap the, the fine, harvest of finances and you reap the harvest of miracles, you'll see how 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 it makes it easier for you to reap the harvest of souls but they're all going to happen concurrently at the same time praise the lord glory be to jesus let me tell you things and i'm going to explain this but let me tell you what we're going to do this 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 uh this second half and especially this uh this month of July, all right? We're going to fast, but it's not going to be, we're not, you know, I don't want anything extreme, all right? We're just going to fast. Everybody, you know, I, if you can't, that's okay. As, as you know, do you have to fast according to your capacity and, and you have to have a witness in your spirit, all right? But this is what I believe the Lord has given me to give to you all, all right? We'll fast through the month of July, all right? But we'll close the fast. We'll just wake up in the morning. You know, you don't eat till, till three o'clock. Three o'clock you can eat. Right, but during that time, all right, between when you wake up, and when I say wake up, I don't mean that you should wake up at 4 a.m. and eat something. No, what I mean is you ate the day before, then you went to bed, woke up, no food till three, all right, no food till three. You can drink water, obviously, right, but uh, no, no food and uh, no, no coke and no Fanta and no malt, none of that, right, no food, all right, till three. And I'll give you a confession. I'll send it, right? This is what you're going to be saying. You're going to be saying that confession over and over again throughout this month of July. And, and if you're wise, you'll say it throughout this year, rest of the year. And then we're going to be giving God thanks. Thanksgiving, very important aspect of what we're going to do to reap the harvest. And I'm going to show you the scriptures. We're going to thank God. We're going to thank God. We're going to praise his name. We're going to praise his name. Hallelujah. All right. And then number three, love well praise all right i talk about praise well fasting is not a point it's just what we need to do generally in this season there are three things we're going to do praise we're going to praise god all right thanksgiving praise all right number two is a confession i'll give you a confession to make we're going to speak it we're going to use our mouth as a sickle and rip the harvest all right and then number three love 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 actions Love actions, love actions, love actions. God's going to show you what actions to take as an expression of divine love. Love actions are necessary. Hallelujah. Some of you, uh, the problem has been uh, you've been bitter by certain things, bitter with certain people, right? And, and, and that bitterness has affected your ability to reap the harvest. So God's going to give you instructions, all right? You're going to start showing love to people, right? And it may just be somebody you don't even know, right? Or somebody you know, but you're wondering, you know, the Lord just says, just do this for them, right? It's just connected to your harvest. Glory be to God. It's connected to your harvest, all right? And I'm going to teach you all that, but I want you to have it in mind. We're going to praise God, all right? Thanksgiving, all right? We're going to confess. We're going to speak it. I'll give you specific confessions. You can always add to that. Then we're going to show love, love actions, 
love actions. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for this season we've entered. This season, the season of the reapers, this month of the reapers, this mon month of reaping. I thank you for grace. I thank you for grace. I thank you for the move of your spirit, the spirit of boldness. We thank you. And I pray for each one that everyone will maximize their harvest in this season. Yes, nothing shall be missing. Nothing shall be lost. Nothing shall be wasted in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You all have a blessed week and I'll see you soon. Yes, just sorry, sorry, before I forget, I need you guys to, if you have any questions, right? Any questions concerning what I'm teaching, right? Especially these exhortations. I need you, I need you to send your questions to that to that address info at andrewosakwemministries.org because I'm going to have a special program where I'm going to address those questions. All right. So I need you to send your questions. All right. And we'll make our time to answer them. All right. So you have a blessed week and I'll see you soon.